Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Rooster Podcast. I'm Gus. That's where Gavin will be. <laughs> <laughs> That's Jack. I'm Jack. There's Jeff. Pew! And I'm still Gus. Uh, to, to episode 699. Yay! Off to hey. off to an awful start. You know what's interesting is the one person who's late is the person who prides himself on his punctuality more than anyone else in the company, <laughs> I would say. Uh, well, Gavin will be here shortly. Maybe. Besides that, the fact that he's not here. Uh, How often does we, that happen? We, once a year, maybe. It's it's actually not that I'm often. so happy I was here. Just uh, with him or in general? So How often do you have to start it. a podcast missing one person? It's, it's, it's always him. It's always him. <laughs> um, we almost weren't able to go live. What? Yeah. <laughs> there were uh, like technical problems with like the the, with the ser- beans. Yeah, with the, the all all of, the way all of that works. The, okay. the beans weren't working. They weren't properly cooked. A lot of that going around today. Ten- I went to Sam's Club earlier with oh, my yeah? girlfriend. Her card didn't work. <laughs> Had to get a new Sam's Club card. Hey, when that a lot happens. of technical problems today. That's embarrassing. It's uh, something in the weather, right? May second. Yeah. Five two. Must be it. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I was convinced we weren't going to be able to go live. I offered to, to live stream it on my Instagram account. Eric didn't like that. Oh. Uh, I'm just looking for solutions. I'm a solutions guy, so I've been doing it for a long time. I appreciate here. that. Yeah. Uh, I was, I'm, I'm just trying to get the message out there, trying to broadcast to as many people as I can. Now, would you say at this oh. point you're vamping until Gavin shows no, no, up? No, 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 not at all. Yeah, right. yeah, I, we, I, we can install I had, I had a thought the other day. Oh, boy. Um, you and I are, 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 are working on this other podcast. Yeah. And there was a story I meant to tell on that podcast, but I forgot until I was driving into work this morning. Should I tell that story now so when people listen to episode three of that podcast, they Ooh. can like segue into this story? Is this has, story... This pod- has this podcast been announced no! at all? Oh, it hasn't? No, say the name. <laughs> announce what they can go get. Like, so you're oh. teasing a podcast. It's not even like, announced yet. The, are you episode kidding? three of a podcast that no one knows oh, about. Oh, yeah, we're working on a new we podcast. We announced it. We haven't talked about it at all. We, we have. We've, talked We've about absolutely it. talked about Gus it. Gus and I have been beta testing it for like two years now. We no, finally are no, making it, it's though. It's an actual... We have a date and everything. It's the, well, yeah. what, what, we have a date? We have a date? Yeah. When's it coming out? It, the Animal Podcast comes out Animal May pod- 8th Did you say Animal Podcast? May 8th. That's a Sunday. Uh huh. And less then than a week. May 9th for every for everyone public. It's wow. coming out this week. Oh my god. <laughs> that's that's soon. This sucks. It's today. The, that's six days from now, right? Yeah, that's seven days. Sunday. From now? May eighth is Sunday. Six and May ninth is Monday. Okay. Shit, dude. Um, subscribe now. The Animal Podcast. Now. Go subscribe um, to it. Animal Podcast. I, 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 I was thinking I about how you and I, <clears throat> when we were much younger, we used to go to garage sales a lot. Yeah, we talked and about that in the podcast we recorded. In episode three. Uh, yeah. Episode three. <laughs> but the thing we didn't mention was that when we would drive around going to these like on early Saturday mornings, we would always listen to Car Talk on NPR. Yes. Click and clack. As, yeah, as we were Stag- driving As around. I still do, yeah. And uh, it, may, it like I started wondering this morning, and I meant to bring this up, uh, like I said, in episode three of that other podcast, um, if listening to Car Talk for so long, for so many years, influenced us in wanting to like talk and have podcasts. Like I know, obviously, there's like Stern uh, was a big influence, uh, yeah, as yeah. well. But like just listening to two people with microphones, just like being entertaining and talking about cars. Like you didn't have to give a shit about cars. I give a shit about cars back then. But it's like it was just listening to people uh, be quick on their feet and uh, and make jokes about something. So the yeah. I think the thing that 100. percent I think they were very influential comedically, at least to me, my entire life. I've been listening to them. I still listen to them every week. They come out every Saturday still on. Uh, like I get them on uh, like the Apple Podcast thing, but it's like, I, I, are these the classic ones? Cause yeah, the so, yeah, because right? d- yeah, t- uh, uh, Tom's dead, I think. Uh, but uh, th- it's like a cut down, and I don't like that. Oh. Like uh, about six months ago, they stopped posting full episodes, and now they've started posting like cut down versions of episodes. And I'm not as crazy about it. But the thing that kills me about those two is how fucking funny they are. At all times, working clean. Like yeah. I think that's the, the biggest <laughs> legacy those two dudes have is how naturally funny they were able to be, but family friendly. I appreciate that you had to drop an f bomb to, to <laughs> well, show how family friendly do it. they are. I can't do it, but they are the, like when I think of like when I think of like the the pinnacle of clean co- comedians. Andrew Dice I think Clay. of them and probably <laughs> Seinfeld. Honestly, yeah, like he works very clean yeah. and he's very successful at it. But like what they did was phenomenal, and they did crowd work. Better than anybody. Mm. Like, their phone calls were f- uh, unbelievable. How, how screen do you think those phone calls are? I always wonder about that. 
Like, because like typically you call up someone. Like, if you call up Stern, you're going through like three people before you I'm get sure on, they're on the air, right? I'm sure they're screened for like, sure. I'm yeah. sure they're. I'm sure they're screened. I'm sure they're screened by not just normal screen, but also like other maybe mechanics who are like can give insight into the the yeah. issue as well. So it's not like they're figuring things out live on the air. They get someone maybe do a little bit of research and set it up. Yeah, like yeah. Like you, you set up so yeah. that they can they can close. Like here's on a package it. for you so, right. to go and start talking to this person. Yeah. What's the story? Was it just that we listened to Click? Oh, and just clack? that. Yeah, that we listened okay. to them and that like it must have influenced uh, uh, wanting to talk into yeah. a microphone for hours at a time. Speaking of talking in into a microphone for hours at a time, Gus, you and I have a new podcast coming out. We do. Yeah, it's uh, I hear it launches Sunday, May eighth. It's called the Anma Podcast. Uh, why don't you tell people why you did that to me? Uh, you wanted to call the podcast <laughs> "Good Morning Gus," yeah, which I did not like. You did not. Why didn't Why didn't you like that? Uh, Gus? Well, in general, I don't think it's a very good name. Good uh, morning, Gus. It's but secondly, anyway. I've been trying to transition away from using Gus as an identifying name and on to using Gustavo. Mm. And I told Jeff this in episode three of the Animal Podcast, which you can listen to in about three or four weeks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that. Oh, no, I told him this in episode two, uh, that it's annoying for people like you who have called me Gus for years, but that there are people who I have met in the last couple of years who only know me as Gustavo, okay. who've never called me I Gus. I don't like the idea that you know people that I don't know you know. Yeah, I know people. That's weird. I'm going and down to the laundromat doing my laundry. Yeah. How, how tough has it been going from a shortened name to a longer name? Like That's like calling someone Mike forever, and then be like, oh, call, call me Michael now. Like, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of an interesting jump. It's... I, I'm, I'm so with like you guys, if people already know me, I'm, I never like correct. I'm never okay. like, don't call me this. Like, you want to call me Gus, that's fine, whatever. But uh, it's just like trying to create this thing going forward. The biggest problem I ever had, the reason I went by Gus for so long is it's just easier to say, right? It's just like mm. quick and uh, you don't like, it's just a very generic sounding name. But I like my name. That's why I told Jeff. Uh, yeah. I was like, I, I think my name is really cool. So I was like, I want to start going by it. Like, Gus isn't really my name. I mean, it's annoying. Like, my insurance card fucking says Gus. Like, <laughs> I've, never, I've never corrected them. Like, that's actually not my name. Like, I don't know if legally I'm going to get into trouble down the road. Like, that should actually be my legal name on there. So it's like, just wanting to be a little more, a little more consistent with that. And, and Eric backed me up, actually. Like, all the titles. And, like, anytime my name's written, it's always Gustavo. Even Survive Block Island, it's oh, like shit. that. Get in here, Gavin. Hello, Gavin. And now, Hello. thus convenes the council of people I do podcasts with. <laughs> All represented right here. Oh, one. yeah, shit. You got... Sorry, I'm late. Yeah. Yeah, it's all good, man. We're one Canadian short of my entire uh, work environment. Your crew, yeah. Yeah. I'm much better at being on time for the ones that aren't live. <laughs> we almost weren't live today. Really? <laughs> <laughs> there were technical problems. We were waiting oh. for you. Like, they, they, uh, they figured it out, nice like... Shit. Thank you. Five minutes before, uh, before we went live. So, big shout out to the broadcast crew for getting that stuff figured out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's the shirt thing? Gavin, you look good. Thanks, man. You like my shirt? Yeah. The Achieve shirt? Is that one of the ones we sold back in the... That's one of the ones we sold in stores, Is this right? the one that shreds if you just like, gently no. touch it? No, that was the Meow Wolf one. Okay. We had a shirt that you could just, just rip it's off It's a nice shirt you. you've got. Thank you. Yeah. All right, what is going on? Like, wh What do you mean? I don't, everyone's saying... No, the, Jeff started laughing for seemingly yeah. no reason. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like... Because Cody said something too when I walked in. Cody, you said something about the shirt. What the fuck? I'm. Uh, I said it was a nice shirt. It's that, a nice shirt. It's a nice shirt. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this guy doesn't know how to take a compliment. I think it's a good shirt. It sounded I, like it I, hurt him you to know, say I thank you. People it's can awesome see shirt. that shirt live and in person, can't they? They can, Gus. <laughs> Was that was that the, that was the setup you were trying to remember Jesus. how we talked about setting up and packages? I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't sure if that was if that we were going for. Why okay. do I do podcasts with any of you people? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Hey, we're doing a live show. That's right. Uh, myself and Jeff Ramsey are going to be in Orlando, Florida, uh, talking about Annual Pass. That's my podcast. That's the, uh, the theme park podcast we do. We are live May 19th in Orlando, Florida, along with the Super Carlin Brothers, and announced today our buddy Dave Cobb, who is actually uh, not an Imagineer, but he was an engineer on the Men in Black ride, a bunch of awesome other attractions. He's going to be hanging out with us, too, uh, in, in the, uh, you know, on the show when we do it live in Orlando. And, uh, and also, I said that anyone who goes to the show Show, you're gonna get an autographed theme park map for myself and Jeff. Can you believe it? Yeah. Please, seriously though, go to the show for <laughs> God's sakes. We don't want to be up there by ourselves alone, looking like losers in front of Dave. Yeah. I he's promise really nice. you, if you go to the show, Jack will suck your dick. <laughs> maybe, maybe not that. Maybe not that do far. It. He's gonna suck them all. He said so. 
He said, don't say it on the podcast, but I'll do it. Jeff's tone is a lot different on this show than he is on annual pass. Uh, yo, more, hey, you think so? Yeah, a little bit more friendly. How, uh, how often do you go to Orlando because of me? like all of this now? Oh, yeah. God, I've been to Orlando like four or five times in the past year, I guess. And, uh, and I somehow have not gotten COVID yet, <laughs> like, <laughs> which is like the Petri dish of the U.S. And I somehow Especially have made it out. Especially dicks in your mouth. <laughs> so... <laughs> bit.ly slash T-I-X dash Orlando. You can pick up tickets right now. There's still tickets available. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, come and hang out. This is going to be Thursday night, May 19th. And then on Friday, we're actually going to be jumping over to Universal Studios. So if you want to come hang out with us there too, or at least me, Jeff's going home because he doesn't like it. Uh, I think I'm going to take the red eye out. Jeff, I don't know if there is a red eye out of Orlando. I'll figure it out. <laughs> I got to get home. Catch a greyhound. It's not of. that I don't want to be there with you. Uh, somebody's got to document all the... Don't Excellent. red eyes typically go from west to east? Typically, yeah. yeah, so you can sleep yeah. until the time yeah. passes. I just got to get home. He's going to get a blue eye. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> going west. He's going to get a pink eye on the did way you, back. Did you, go to, did you go to Thorpe Park? I did go to Thorpe Park. So did Jeff. We're actually, uh, this week's episode of Annual Pass is all about us at Thorpe Park. How was it? It was a lot of fun. We had a, we had a good time, have, I think. Have you been to Thorpe Park before? I have. That's you, where uh, I, my jacket set off the metal detector. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time you went to Thorpe Park? Ooh, 2009. Okay. So most most stealth. Of you, okay, stealth. Uh, we didn't ride stealth. Oh, At first, I thought you were saying there, Thor Park. Then I thought you were saying <laughs> Thort Park. <laughs> Thor- now I realize it's Thorpe yeah, Park. Thorpe. The, yeah, Thorpe O-P-E. Park. Uh, we, the stealth was the only kind of major thrill ride we didn't go on, aside from the spinny ones, because oh. that would have literally. What is literally that to go on other than stealth? Oh, there, dude, there's dude. The, the fucking it's a swarm. <laughs> uh, there's a samurai, there's the saw ride, there's the walking dead ride, there's the black mirror ride, oh, there's the monkey the banana, ride and the there's black a mirror. captain, captain like banana license? and the, and the yeah. monkey boat. The, the, yeah, the banana boat. Uh, yeah. no, there, there's, there's saw the ride, Rapa which is, is the first horror the, the, themed roller coaster. Knock you out and you wake up in a bathroom. <laughs> like, yeah. You actually, that one, you go, you go straight up vertical to get to the top of the lift hill and then it dips down. It goes a hundred degrees. So it actually dips oh. further than, than 90 degrees down. And then, uh, and there's like there's intense. saw stuff. It's pretty cool. Jeff didn't go on that one. He uh, yeah. he bailed on that one. That was the last one of the day. That one that one wrecked my head pretty bad. Um, let's see. There was Phoenix Inferno, which was a hanging coaster. Hey, real quick, Emily says hi, and that you look good in that shirt. She texted me. Are you talking to me? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Can you I not tell where that. his eyes are looking? I no. I thought he was looking at Gavin. From here, I thought <laughs> he was looking at Gavin I'm looking too. Right in his fucking eyes. I, I just assumed you were talking to Gavin. Why would I? I like it your looked glasses. like. Would you come your shirt? I like your glasses. Thank you. What's really going on here? Brown, kinda. Yeah, that, that's cool. What is going on? This is, I don't know. I, this is the combination. I'm not in on it. <laughs> okay, I trust you guys. I feel, I you feel gotta go. Show. Here's the deal. You gotta go to Orlando. I don't even care if you don't have a dick. You still gotta go to Orlando. <laughs> Jack is gonna be there. He's gonna make it worth your while. Oh god. Okay. We're How gonna have a blast. Oh, we got like another hour. May nineteenth, Thursday night. What else are you going to do on a Thursday night other than hang out with a bunch of old dudes with beards in a dark room? What? Why is it dark? <laughs> well, yeah. Well, yeah. I assume there's lights out, right? There's <laughs> lights on the <laughs> stage. Not, like, you don't walk into a dark room and we just talk to you. Well, it's dark over there. There's this is the same like kind podcast of thing. stuff. Like, they're dark, not going to be on stage where the lights are. They'll yeah, be in the dark they, part Maybe the we'll be in the seats and they'll be on stage. Giving, However you want to do it, man. It's your show. <laughs> you can just give them like an ASMR. Experience where you describe everything in a dark room. <laughs> really soft voice. Just descri- describe just the, the roller coaster. Scratch your beard into the mic. But uh, anyway, it's going to be a lot of fun. So You're a lot of fun. Come, come join us at Annual Pass Live uh, May 19th in Orlando. And then maybe hang out with us at a theme park the next day. So uh, Jack got a free hot dog. I did get a free hot dog. You got a free hot dog. Yeah. At Why? Thorpe Park? At Thorpe Park. Yeah, their credit card machine stopped working. And so I stood there for like 15 minutes and finally was like, uh, you can just take it. <laughs> oh, so it, co- it cost you 15 minutes then. That's yeah, not a free hot dog. A lot of great time. stuff in England. A lot of great stuff in England. Gavin came from England. He's great. Uh, Indian food over there is phenomenal. They didn't come uh, from England, though. Hot dogs. Well, the British Indian food over there is, mm. in, in England is phenomenal. Uh, all the flowers and stuff. They got castles. Uh, hot dogs suck. Hot dogs was not good. What was wrong with it? We the, do hot dogs wrong? How do you mess it, up a hot dog? They were, it, was, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was... It was... Maybe it was... Too many lips. I don't know. It was, a different, <laughs> it, was not a, it was not a meat I recognized. No, it was not good. It was huh. not, not a good it hot dog. It might have been real meat. I, I, yes, I bet no. they have like higher quality standards yeah. there. It might have been the real stuff. I don't like it. Uh, mm. Like I need, I need my high fructose corn syrup <laughs> and everything. No, no real sugar, please. More processed food. Uh, no, Saw the Ride was awesome. Uh, yeah, there was an Angry Birds 4D thing that we didn't go on. Didn't do that. Uh, we did the, the Walking... Sounds like that place really went to hell. <laughs> the Walking Dead Ride is actually really cool, too. 
that was a lot of fun. Um, Except it goes on about twice as long as it should have. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the episode of In Between Us where yes. um, he ends up with a red door and they go to yeah. a theme park? Is that Thorpe Park? Pretty sure that was Thorpe Park. Really? Oh, I should tell Buckley. I was it was either fucking... Thorpe Park or Alton Towers. Yeah, They're those the are the main two. ones. Yeah. Uh, Alton Towers is the place everybody told us we should have gone to. But we quite enjoyed yeah, Thorpe Park. They go to Thorpe Park. Yeah. The third episode of the first season of In Between Us. So now you can watch oh, wow. the episode of In Between Us and be like, I've been on that. I've, I've been there. Oh, well, they didn't go on stealth. So They did go on stealth? I mean, I mean you didn't go on. I did not go on stealth. the main reason to go there. So. Wow. <laughs> How long were you in the UK for? <laughs> I was there for seven days. Seven days. It's a long trip. Monday to Monday. It was long. That's I, why if you're going to go, make it worthwhile. I love Jeff. I've never seen him panic more than when he had to get his COVID test to come back to the States. Because I, I got to get, listen. What does that he, mean? Why'd he, you panic? Okay, so it's weird. Panic. It's I weird. Panic. I don't understand this right now because to get outside of the U.S., you kind of just go and take off as whatever. No one gives a shit. Coming back to the U.S., you have to have a negative COVID test to get into the States, which I figured of all places at this point, really. People, yeah, we don't give a fuck about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, was, it was odd. So uh, we got over there and Jeff immediately was like, I have to book this thing in advance. And he paid a whole lot of money to get it done, and then like set a, set a time like to to get it to get it all sorted. And then I just walked down the street, went to a place, was like, "Hey, I got to do this." I get like, yeah, no problem. And then uh, yeah, that? yeah, he last minute half asked it. I planned you it full out. Asked it. Uh, yeah, because I am. I would literally had to get on a plane in the UK, get off a plane in America, and drive to pick my daughter up from school. Mm. I had like responsibilities back in America, so I couldn't be fucking about. Because I didn't have a COVID test. I saw. No, I still got my COVID test. I got my results before Jeff. Too. I've, I've done it both ways. I've done like the uh, panic plan it like 48 hours before, go somewhere to do it. I've also just gone to the airport and done it. Yeah, but it's yeah. the scary way to do it. I the, saw, at the airport, they only have one in Terminal 1, and I was in Terminal 5. I don't want to fucking mm, Terminal Queen's Hop terminal. 5 terminals. Yeah. Mm. Um, I saw an article in the New York Times last week that said the majority of Americans have had COVID by this point. I think wow. the estimate was like 60% of the United States has had uh, COVID. Gus, have you had it yet? No, I have not. Me neither. I'm part of the forty percent. Hey, hey. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm, I'm afraid. Like, I I'm keep a minority. <laughs> <laughs> you're not allowed to say that. I keep saying I'm afraid that if we don't get it soon, it's going to be like the thing where if you don't get chicken pox as a kid, then you get it as an adult. It's way worse. Like we we're going to need to get it before it mutates. And like, oh yeah, if you didn't have COVID before the new <laughs> Zeta variant, it's going to kill you. Yeah, 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 I'm not licking you with the new variant. No. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's 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 terrible. Yeah, it's not fun. <laughs> but it was my first international trip I had done since uh, since COVID started. So. Oh, I haven't been international yet since then. Yeah, so it was nice. It was it's fun. It's, it's always good. I mean, the RT UK community was did, great as well. Like everyone was super. Did you take the British Airways there. flight? The non-flight? yeah, yeah. The uh, they have a new plane. It's still a seven thirty seven, but it's uh, or not seven. No, they uh, take the uh, Airbus A three fifty now. I think don't they? Yeah. yeah, I think it's the one that's three three three. I think it's. I think they fly an A three fifty on that route, but. Still not as nice as the Dreamliner we had for those two or three months when they first opened up that flight. A350 is a good plane. I see that plane all the time now in my flying lessons. I see it like when it coming into land or like taxiing to go Mm. to the terminal. It's like it's always arriving around the time I'm there. It's like it's always the most posh sounding person like on air traffic control. It's like there's a myriad (laughs) of British accents. It's never like a scouser who's flying that plane. (laughs) You picture like a dude with a top hat. (laughs) Yeah, and a monocle flying that plane. It's a very specific accent, a very specific British accent that the pilot of that plane will always have. And it's it's like (laughs) there's no variation. Same time every day, just a British voice comes over the (laughs) airway. Uh, but it's a it, yeah, it's a, it's it's funny to me. It's like oh yep, even before he identifies, like oh that's British Airlines. I n- I know who that is. Do you uh, bring back any Bovril? Uh, I th- I don't know. Did you bring it back? We had some. We actually had some Bovril. No, I didn't bring it back. No. Uh, somebody there told me like you can't bring it back to the states. You're not allowed to carry Bovril. Bovril uh, from the UK into America. You smuggle it. But uh, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a law-abiding citizen, man. I'm not looking here to break, <laughs> you break you any to go rules. To school. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> straight to school. I had to get I had to get <clears throat> Millie from school. Bovril beef extract. <laughs> yeah, you know, oh, that's a whole thing. You don't know about beefy Bovril? No, I don't. Apparently, you, you don't. You it's don't a good to. way to drink beef. Yeah, oh. <laughs> it's like, imagine I'll like buy a, some right now. If you ever like, wanted to drink some hot wanna, beef? It's like you want to spread beef on toast. It's good for that too. It's like a, like a soup. I can buy it right now. Two hundred fifty grams, eighteen bucks. Yeah, there you 250 go. Two hundred fifty grand. It's it's like a soup without the stuff in it. It's like if you just like if you Is took out like stock. Yeah, if you it's like bone broth. Yeah, yeah. High protein beef paste. I wouldn't eat it that way. That's my rapper it's, name. It's, do you like Marmite? 
Eh, it's all right. It's the same as Marmite if okay. you use it as a paste. If you mix it in with hot hot water, <laughs> it becomes like beef bouillon. It's it's drinkable. But you you would rather have coffee, I promise you. Oh, it's like a, a like a morning thing, like a morning. It's like drink? a hot drink on a cold day kind of thing. Oh, I don't like know if it was a morning thing for sure. I, I always had it in the evening, like on a call. It's a, it's a it's a hot thing on a cold day. <laughs> like if you had a football game or like something like that. It's something outside. that steams yeah. when you're outside. <laughs> we had a uh, little teaser for the next bleep face episode. Andrew tried some. Oh, did he? Were you I, think, at me I think I may have actually. Were you looking at me or you, Jeff? I can't see. I was looking at Jeff. He was looking at me. I thought Jeff would be like, "Yeah, he God did." Damn it! I'm just. I'm gonna back up. Yeah, Andrew <laughs> tried. It. Well, did he? It did he? Or try did he? It? Did he not? That guy lies about everything. So I'm <laughs> no, gonna no, assume no, no, no. he did not actually. Here, Andrew came up with a game. Here's the thing. Uh, we just did our hundredth episode of the Bleep Face podcast. A very sweet episode, by and the way. Very, very sweet. Lots of emotional. It got things. oddly wholesome in the middle. Didn't I, some Gavin's horrifying story. I knocked it out of the park by getting live tattooed during the podcast. Mm-hmm. That everybody agrees that was awesome. Then Gavin told <laughs> one of the greatest stories I've ever heard. One of the most in my grotesque stories ever. Life. Uh, just horrendous. And then Andrew was also at the podcast. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and then so in episode 101, Andrew felt like he had to make up for, uh, you know, shitting the bed in episode 100 <laughs> yeah. by not contributing in any way whatsoever. And so he came up with a game and he, <laughs> that it required him maybe to drink or eat bottle. Okay. I oh, that's what that much. was. Okay. I almost spoiled too much. Okay. I, I, I may have like te- I may tease test that test on the next one. Yeah. I saw have, have you already for recorded your yes, next I re- time? Yes. I recorded them yesterday for Nick. Because nice. yeah, is that the most annoying part of your week, by the way? Me? Yeah. No, it's it's fun. <laughs> I enjoy doing it because I love trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, and I will give props to Eric and Nick because they definitely talk a lot during the episode in Discord. So I give the the next week on you know on Fuckface episode like the the recap of what's coming up. I guess not recap, precap. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, recap. And uh, and so uh, it's just me guessing as to what's coming up in the future episode by based on the Discord chat. And I've been very close on a lot of things. I, I predicted. So there's times where, <laughs> where they won't record an episode. So I literally have to make a next week on and there's nothing has been recorded yet. And I predicted some stuff that came out, which I was very excited for. What was that you did recently? Piss Boy. Piss Boy. I said, it, I said yeah. the return of Piss Boy Piss and it actually out. showed up. Which and was, you were like, did you see that? The preview and then talk about Piss Boy. I was like, no, did you talk about Piss Boy in the preview? <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, but so one of my favorite things is having to record them in weird spots. So I've recorded one in line for the Slinky Dog Dash at Disney's Hollywood Studios <laughs> in Florida. And then this most recent one, if it sounds weird, it's because I'm I'm standing outside of Terminal 3 at Heathrow. <laughs> We're recording it on my phone to send to Nick. High quality. High yeah, good. high quality. It fits in with that podcast. Though. Yeah. Jesus so. Christ. Speaking cool. of recording in weird places... Our new podcast, Anma. When does that come out again? It comes out, I believe, May 9th. That's a Sunday. It'll be May 8th for, for first members for on May Sunday. For first May, May 9th. What's May 9th for the normal people. Yeah. That's a Monday. Uh, and it's a, it's a bad name for a podcast is what it is. Sounds like but it, it, it Following in the it rich tradition of Rooster Teeth, uh, dog shit name, Achievement Hunter, dog shit name, uh, every, pretty much every other name, dog shit name, why not our <laughs> podcast? Uh, we, it came to me in a dream. We record on Could've location. Good morning, <laughs> good morning, Gustavo. Like That would have been good. <laughs> Where did we record episode three? Uh, we recorded it at Home Slice on North Loop. Yeah, we did. <laughs> but they weren't open yet, so we had to record it like on the outdoor seating by the bus stop. <laughs> <laughs> and the bus, and it was garbage day. A lot day. of buses. <laughs> <laughs> Not only were buses coming by, but there were garbage trucks and just regular big trucks uh, driving uh, by. So who goes out with you to do it? Eric. Just Eric? Eric. It's just me, Gus, and Eric. And then Gus wow. and I sit down. We hit record. I say, good morning, Gus. Well, and normally, we start the podcast. Normally, Eric hits record, and I just start talking. Yeah. And then you you stop me, and you go, wait, wait, wait. I haven't said it yet. You have another podcast with an intro problem? <laughs> 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 and then you say it, and then I kind of acknowledge, half acknowledge it, and then I keep talking about whatever I was talking about. I got. I was telling Emily the other day, that third, the second episode we recorded, third episode was good. The second episode we recorded, which we recorded here because it was raining. It was, hold on, it was raining. I'm doing air quotes. Eric said we, we couldn't record outside because it was raining. It wasn't raining. It was oh, raining. You son it was of a not. Bitch. I walked where, in. It was where not were raining. you going to record it? Like, where was the plan to record that episode? Where we ended up for the third episode. Uh, yeah. So we just got coffee from a different place for that one. Uh, it's good. So anyway, you, second episode. That was m- third episode. maybe the 
top five best podcasts I think I've ever recorded. So not the first episode. So listen to the first episode. The second episode. It's okay. <laughs> no, the I second just, episode the, is the where pilot, it's good. And, unless you're something, lost or Breaking Bad, the pilot's never the best episode. Something, so no, I just something about the second episode. I just I, th- I thought about it for like three days later, just about how good that one felt. It was fun. The it third was, one felt good too. I just it's we, just Gus and I telling old 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 it stories. It is like you got. I just prompt you guys with, hey, what about this? Hey, here's an idea, and then it just is like. The year was 1998. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the interesting is since we go out on location, we try obviously except for the second one because it was raining. You know, recorded here. But we try to go. You're not bitter not about raining. that, are you? We go to different locations around town, and then it just like invariably, Jeff and I have lived here so long. It's like we'll be at a location, we'll be like, oh, do you remember when we came here back in the 90s and this happened, or then you know we left here and we went there, and it's like just like looking around, like, oh, we know all of this stuff that happened here before this existed. Yeah. Uh, That's kind of the point of it. Uh, Like, we were sitting down to record at this home slice, and Gus reminded me that it used to be a doctor's office. And not only did it used to be a doctor's office, but he and I got kicked out of it. (laughs) (laughs) We got yelled at (laughs) by the doctor and the nurses. Was it, wasn't the original <laughs> drunk tape? <laughs> Same. Was it, was it? <laughs> you gotta listen to episode three. Okay. Episode, episode three is a good one, Gavin. Just wait two months for <laughs> it. And then, we, and, then we, and then because we were sitting there outside, I was rem- reminded that Home Slice named my old dog. And I had n- n- listen, not even thought about that. Listen to episode three to find out. Episode yeah. three is a great one. Wasn't Drunk Tank originally going to be recorded at different bars or at different places down? Because it was downtown. It was the old Congress office. Yeah. And like the plan was to shoot it or record it in different restaurants or was it different bars? I remember there was, or maybe you were going to start we another had, Yeah, podcast. we had a separate website we wanted to do that would um, rate all, every bar in the city of Austin. Was that Drunk Army? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think we ever wanted to do the podcast remotely. I don't know that. We had the equipment or the know-how at the time okay. to be able to record remotely. Zoom recorders weren't a thing yet. Yeah, I was like, we were pretty dumb, too. <laughs> so I think we wouldn't dumb. even know what to look for. Will there be 100 episodes of this one? I, we'll go till we run out of stories. I don't know. Oh, you should you should record one from the area where your car used to be parked when it was oh, coming. That's, that's a great idea. There's no coffee shop. What's around there? There's a yeah, but there's a there's a HEB they're oh, building it's, there. It's kind of close to Mozart's. Yes, we, we can record at Mozart's. Put Mozart's on the list. Yeah, yeah. put Mozart's on the list. Oh, what's, I got a great I got a great like? story about Gavin at Mozart's. We can tell. I can tell. He looks concerned now. I mean, I, well, well, I'll listen to that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually excited to listen to this podcast. It is like. Something I'd be a fan of, I assume, if I was still well, living in England. It, it, it's a lot about, it's almost like a love letter to Austin and the change that it's seen. And it's funny because the other day on the Austin subreddit, I saw someone posted an article that was published in Austin Monthly about, like, or looking back on an old MTV show called Austin Stories that aired like one 25 the, years ago. One right? of the reasons I moved here. That and show. Uh, it's like a, a long article. They talk to like the <clears throat> cast and people who were involved in pro- producing that show. And one of my favorite quotes in uh, in that <laughs> article, I sent it to Jeff and Eric. I'm going to make sure I read it exactly right. Yeah, you don't want to paraphrase. Uh, where was it? Uh, and they, they just talk about what their experiences were. Oh, here it is. Uh, and uh, the one of the people who they were interviewing said, uh, regarding why they decided to film it in Austin. That was a new idea at the time, the slacker. When I went to Austin, I thought, this is a retirement community for 20-somethings. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, the city does not have that feel at all no. anymore. But it's like, it's definitely something that was, uh, that was lost in time for a while back then. You could also try and find that homeless guy and see if he still thinks you're the worst thing that ever happened to Austin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything that's wrong with Austin. We could just go try to find all the homeless titties guys used to see all the time. <laughs> God, we got to do, we gotta do an episode downtown so we can talk about that. Oh, like man. Jackalope or something, or... Uh, Casino that? El Camino. We, could, we should probably do hideout. Honestly, we could do hideout. hideout. We could definitely do hideout. We could do Halcyon. We talk a million hideout stories. We probably do multiple episodes. Are, are there any little cities left, or are they just a roaster? Uh, it's just a roaster now. I think. Yeah. Hideout? Unless there's maybe like one in Cedar Park or something. This episode of the Receipt Podcast is brought to you by MeUndies. You know those days when your coffee shop is out of cold brew and your air conditioner breaks, and you try to go to the beach, but there's zero parking spots. Yeah, you know, life can be hard. Well, good thing MeUndies is here to help you take a break from the hardships of the world and give yourself a soft summer. When you're cocooned in the softest, most breathable undies, loungewear, and swimwear known to humanity, all your other problems will simply melt away. Jeff, I wish you would melt away right now. (laughs) (laughs) You know how I feel about MeUndies. I've been talking about them for years. I love the fit. I love the patterns. I love the company. I'm a MeUndies guy. 
you know that about me, Jeff. Uh, clearly, uh, I would show you, but I'm sitting on them right now. It's like the blue ones with banana. I don't think you can get them anymore. I love those. Bananas are it's the most comedic fruit. Take my word for it. Best underwear game, uh, hands down. Uh, let's face it. Summer is sweaty. Your butt does not have to be. With MeUndies light and breathable micro modal fabric, you can stay comfy and cool all summer long. They have super fun seasonal prints, tons of styles to choose from, and sizes extra small to 4XL so you can bring the beach to your butt without ever leaving your living room. Uh, if you do dare to brave the heat and venture to the pool or beach, check out their new and improved swimwear styles. They're soft, stretchy, and sustainably made. Make it a soft summer with MeUndies. MeUndies has a great offer for you right now. For any first-time purchasers, you get 15% off. Uh, if you sign up for their free-to-join membership, you can apply that 15% off to their already discounted membership prices. MeUndies.com slash Rooster Teeth. Again, that's MeUndies.com slash Rooster Teeth. Go there now. This episode of the Rooster Podcast is brought to you by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Life can be overwhelming and many people are burned out without even knowing it. Symptoms can include lack of motivation, feeling helpless or trapped, detachment, fatigue, and more. Uh, we all know about burnout, uh, especially after having worked from home, having that whole like work-life balance thrown off and trying to figure out how to get your life back and separate it from work. You know, it's tough to it's tough to do, but it's important to, to recognize it and address it. You know, we associate burnout with work, but that's not the only cause. Uh, any of our roles in life can lead us to feel burned out. But BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to prioritize yourself. Uh, talking with someone can help you figure out what's causing stress in your life. But that's why we have therapy, right? Keeping these feelings bottled up isn't going to help anything and it's not going to solve your problem. You need to get help, talk to someone, and maybe check out therapy. BetterHelp is a customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. Uh, it's much more affordable than in-person therapy. You can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Rooster Teeth podcast listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash rooster. That's better, hel pcom slash rooster. Thanks, BetterHelp. This episode of Receipt Podcast is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like having a first aid kit but not keeping it stocked up. Most of the time, you'll probably be okay. Uh, but what if you suddenly get into a horrible accident and there's nothing in your first aid kit to help you stop the bleeding? Well, you've got to think ahead and protect yourself. So think about this. Every time you connect to an unencrypted network, cafes, hotels, airports, any hacker on the same network can gain access to your personal data like passwords, financial details, you know, stuff like that. It doesn't take much technical knowledge to hack someone, just some cheap hardware is needed, uh, and even a smart 12-year-old could do it. I bet 12-year-old probably doesn't even have to be that smart. Uh, your data is valuable. Hackers can make up to $1,000 per person selling personal info on the dark web. That's where ExpressVPN comes in. It creates a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet, so hackers can't steal your sensitive data. It would take a hacker with a supercomputer over a billion years to get past ExpressVPN's encryption. Plus, it's so easy to use. Just fire up the app, click one button to get protected. And the best part is that it works on all devices, phones, laptops, tablets, and more. So you can stay secure on the go. I've uh, been using ExpressVPN for probably like over two years now at this point. It's on all my devices. Uh, like I said, phone, laptop, tablet. Uh, it's so fast and easy. I'll forget that it's running. Uh, and you know, it's just so easy to install and to use. Um, it's great. I think you should absolutely try it out. So secure your online data today by visiting expressvpn.com slash rooster. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash rooster. You get an extra three months free. It's expressvpn.com slash rooster. Hideout enabled me to eat probably 200 torchies tacos without ever going in there. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the hideout story where well, maybe maybe Gavin wasn't there. It was the one where we walked into hideout and someone had a laptop open and was watching a YouTube video. It was Gavin. It, was it? Gavin pointed it to us and he goes, hey, there's my video. Is that, was that you? I remember that someone was doing that. Was I the one that saw it or did you tell? No, I think I was. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was like right after Slow Mo Guys started and they were watching either your like the blue right. video or something. I forget what it was. but I think it was before Slow Mo Guys. Was it? Because I didn't think it was very early. It's very old. We're all old now. Because I don't think I ever came back to the Congress office post Slomo guys. Hmm. Dan came by. I remember. So th that yeah. was there was still. You only started spending time with him when you could hit him. <laughs> 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 uh, so it must have been post hit. I, yeah. Years are hard now. I don't know when. Yeah, they are. <laughs> I asked Gus before we started, when was the last time this was the lineup for the RT podcast, do you think? It was probably at the Congress office. It, yeah, literally, it was probably, yeah, probably over Ralph 10 years Oblimato, ago. I don't, I don't think. Yeah, Maybe? probably Ralphie. You think so? Yeah. I don't know. I'm sure someone in, and I'm sure someone has a spreadsheet somewhere that is the, the cast list. They'll figure it out. <laughs> 
And now that we're all sitting here, you can see why we haven't done it since. No, I know. We're, 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 we're we all have great. other podcasts to talk about shit. And then we come here and we had nothing. I always get worried for you, Jack, when you're on a podcast with Jeff. Why is that? Oh, well, Jeff and Gus. <laughs> Jeff and Gus. Dude, oh yeah. I think the one... <laughs> the, okay, so if you've ever listened, if you ever go back, like, I'm going to listen to the early days of the RT <laughs> podcast. Holy shit. <laughs> Talk about change of tone. Yeah, we... Uh, wow. We, we, we're very We've different. reined it in. Yeah, than, than what, it was what, back then. Different? Is that the, is that the word you're going to use? <laughs> we're more mature. Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, you're not, here's the deal. Here's it. Gus and I are a little older, a little nicer, and you're not nearly as much of a fucking loser as you <laughs> Like, you can't, like, yeah, Gus and I were dickheads, uh -huh. for sure, but you were also a fucking loser. Okay. <laughs> what, for like, like you can't blame both of us. <laughs> it's like, it's hap the, the cycle, it's happening again. Yeah, you can't, it can't, it's not all on us. Some of it had to, had to do with you. The genie's out of the box. Wait, so why was I a fucking v loser, victim blaming. to you? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> What made me a fucking loser? Yeah, I, all of your interests and opinions and stuff. <laughs> so video games? <laughs> your you have a podcast way. with him about his interests. I know. I've sucked him yeah, into it. Yeah, he's gotten so much better. He's so much cooler now. <laughs> I just went to fucking England with him. That was one that was like oh. an hour of you getting made fun of because you got robbed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got robbed twice in a week. And it was just Jeff shitting on me for getting my stuff stolen. <laughs> for some reason... That, no one has any sympathy for people that get robbed. <laughs> for what is worth, Gu I, Gus I saved I helped my you ass. catch the guy. Yeah, we got Gus helped him fucking. <laughs> yeah, we caught the guy. And Gus we caught CSI the guy. And the, the cop who was supposed to do his job, oh. we did basically said, "Hey, do you want a job with, with the Austin police?" Because <laughs> they couldn't figure out what we did. Like, yeah, I was like, "Oh my god!" I was like, get a warrant. Go to Time Warner Cable. Get, get yeah. this information. We, we tracked the guy to like uh, like a half mile radius. Like we knew where it was, like in a half mile, and we we're able to like, get them to finally. Subpoena the records of the IP addresses to go to the specific house, and they caught the guy. Yeah, but yeah, but Jeff was relentless. I will say this: next time <laughs> Gus and I hire a fucking druggie to br to rob you, we're gonna get one who's a little better at it. <laughs> that was God that was damn. immersion two. That was the uh, yeah. the Doom immersion. Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah. I had to go sit and I had to go sit in Bernie's truck to be quiet to laugh to myself for a little bit because you were too mad. <laughs> <laughs> because we found out on the set, and I oh, couldn't stop laughing. Was that 2010? Oh God! I, don't I was know. so it was so funny, and Jack looked like he was gonna like he turned into like he he turned into like like in but like. It, a stick like, of like, like what? He turned into like it was like a stick of lit dynamite. I could tell he was going to explode, and so I went and I sat in Bernie's truck and I laughed for fifteen minutes. Oh my god! And then I came out. And that was so okay. things are a little bit different nowadays. So. Uh, it's been good. <laughs> I haven't been robbed in a long time. Hey, on the I bright know. side, you're a winner now. Yeah. Yeah. What does that mean? I wonder, means you're not a loser anymore. <laughs> I wonder, so that <sighs> dude who robbed you is out of jail by now, right? Yeah. He actually never went to jail. Oh, really? No, no. My, so uh, my, my parents ended up basically making an agreement with him to pay a, a certain, like a large amount of money. Did he? Uh, he did over, he, he was paying like uh, like a couple dollars a week for years and years and years. And then the end of his sentence was coming up and they're like, you still owe a shitload of money. And th th then he tried to get the judge to basically just like wipe it out. And Ooh. my parents, my mom went and yelled at him in front of the judge, which was awesome. And then ev eventually his dad, who was super rich, gave him the money to pay us off. So, yeah, yeah like he's clean. Yeah, he's he's no longer he's no longer uh, under our watch anymore. Could you technically rob him and not go to jail? <laughs> well, no, because he paid, yeah. if he hadn't paid, then the judge could have said, OK, you can rob him. Just don't, <laughs> yeah. don't let him know when you could take eight hundred dollars well, worth of stuff from his house. No, that's the funny thing, because like I guess a lot of the stuff he stole, because he didn't just steal from us. He stole from a bunch of other people, too. And then he claimed he didn't have the money for it. And I said, cool, I want his car. And then I was just going to drive his car off a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> just be like, yep, that's all I want. I just want his, I just want his car. Just give me that, and we'll call it even. Just film it, make a YouTube video out exactly. of it, just make a bunch of money off the monetized but video. My uh, my parents weren't, weren't cool with that. Your, your parents didn't want you to drive a car oh, off a cliff? No, no, you could no. film it and then license that footage. That was like <laughs> <laughs> a B-roll on Shutterstock yeah. or something. We'll end up in a Daniels movie years later. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's all it's all done now, so no, I have no... I have no one giving me money due to stealing my stuff anymore. So we've promoted the Anma podcast. We've promoted the mm -hmm. annual pass appearance and dick sucking. Gavin, do we have any like fuckface stuff we need to promote? Oh, oh we're going to be going to Vegas in November, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Dude, 
No, Andrew said yes, but in a maybe-ish way. <laughs> he said no yes maybe. in a maybe-ish no, way, No, there's no maybe. We can all put, said yes. Can I put money down on Andrew not going to we Vegas? We all said yes. How can we say no? We Did said yes. November? Yeah, November. It's Vegas, right? I put $20 down and says he's not going to do it. What? Look, yeah. He's going to twist his ankle getting up to go to the airport. Yeah. We, we he can, twisted his sure. ankle getting in line. <laughs> Remember when he said he could do three marathons in a week? <laughs> <laughs> well, we had to we had to push that back a couple months because he got a bagel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have uh, episode seven hundred of the podcast next hey. week. Congratulations! What are you guys Thanks. gonna do for it? We're gonna make beans. Beans. What kind of beans? You wanna come by and eat some beans? Yeah. Okay. Come hole, by eat some beans? Is there a hole anywhere that you have beans in? Right? Yeah. Are these no, bean no. hole beans or are these? Just no, like... they're regular beans, not bean hole beans. Gavin How said that he can make beans. Who can make beans? Gavin. How are you making beans? How was I making beans? <laughs> you just said that you could do it. You didn't say anything specific. Eric's eyes got so I, big just then. I thought I didn't want to do anything and just eat the beans. Did you, I say I'd You said you could make beans. I, I mean, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll give it a go. What kind of beans? Like kind of beans. <laughs> why, why, like, <laughs> that's what he said you were going to do. <laughs> like lima beans, beans, mung beans, baked uh, beans. Oh, no. I was going to research beans, black beans? how to do like the long bean method that you do, <laughs> but put my own... You want to spin on it? it? What is your come, long, come by long, and find out. Like what is a, your long just bean? like a in a slow cooker, just like cooking beans for like eleven like, hours. Like a green oh, bean, okay. like a pot of beans is a long bean, or is it? <laughs> <laughs> so, how many time. different kinds of beans could I sample on? We're, we're we're working to figure it out. Okay, but come by if you want beans. What kind of beans do you want? I like all beans. I'm a big bean guy. Are you an, are you lie. anti any beans? No. no. I no. can't think of a bean I wouldn't eat. Even a navy okay. bean. I can, yeah, I eat a navy bean. I don't give a fuck, dude. Kidney bean. What whatever you got. I'll even go. I'll go black-eyed peas, and I'll, I'll, I get into pea territory. Mung, I don't care. huh? Mung, yeah. You want to make some beans? We say I, I, I listen. I will eat mung. any. I will eat any bean, <laughs> any vegetable, and any fruit I like. There's not a bean, vegetable, or fruit that I'm not. I don't fuck with. Can we get some durian? I don't like avocado, but that's it. What? Huh? Durian? You don't like avocado? I've never tried durian fruit. But Jackfruit? I would. I've never tried it, but I would. Wait, did you just say you'll eat any vegetable, and then you said, but not avocado? Yeah, I forgot about avocados. I don't I, like them, but I'll there, eat anything else. What do you fruit. not like about avocados? Oh, yeah. dude, have you tasted right? them? <laughs> have you had one? I had one today. Like in your mouth? Yeah. That's why I don't like it. I don't understand. I don't like avocados either. Yeah, the I'm flavor and the taste, the texture, the color, I don't like any of it. I want to like it. I try avocado all the time. I love every time the, I try it, I'm like, it's no good. Same. I love yeah. the idea of guacamole. I just, it tastes like dog shit. Have you tasted dog shit? Unfortunately, I have. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so you have a Ginny, you have a one to one comparison yeah, on that. Yeah. Okay, got it. I wouldn't doubt huh. it with him. I Do try you have, dog shit tastes like avocado. <laughs> Who would have thought? I try uh, olives every four years, and I hate them every time. Mm. Green or black or both? Both. Really? I what? think I've had black olives more times, but they're all just on disgusting. a pizza. You don't like them? No. I don't even like the area that they used to be on. The, it's the olive. Remnants. It's dirty with olive. It's all, all What's your least favorite vegetable, Gus? Least fi- cucumber. I, God, I was, was going to ask if I could say it. Yeah. I guarantee. I, I knew it was going to be cucumber. cucumber. It's awful. Yeah. Anything it touches, like like you with olives. Anything a cucumber touches, I know, and it's awful. It's so funny because the other one, the other old guy, Bernie, yeah. was like the same way. You guys, if <laughs> the other one, if you guys see, like you even see it. You can't you can't eat any no. food around you. No. But I like it because it's such a slight like <laughs> it like overpowers everything. Taste. Yeah, it's, it's the opposite of overpowering. Yeah, but only like, like cucumber water. Like that's the worst. You go oh, like a, you best. go like a fancy place and like oh here's your cucumber. Like, oh this is, no. Uh, or like when give I used still, to drink, give me out of the sink. If I got if they would serve me like a gin and tonic with a cucumber on it, mm. no, no, yeah. I'm not about that. It's a mushroom. Is that a vegetable? No, it's a fungus. 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 I didn't. I didn't know. Like, I, I. I do not like mushrooms. I can't do mushrooms. I like them raw. It's, you don't like any vegetable. I'll, I'll eat any vegetable. I just don't like mushrooms, which are a fungus. So yeah, I'm good with vegetables. <laughs> you don't eat any vegetable? Yeah, give me a vegetable. I'll eat it. All right, we're getting durian and jackfruit for uh, Jeff, and uh, fruit, we'll find some. Uh, huh? Yeah, because he said he'd oh, eat okay. any fruit, and we'll find some vegetables for, some uh, vegetables. for Jack. What about? I, uh, I used to be anti. I used to be super anti-vegetable, but now I'm not. How do you feel about Swede? Like the country. <laughs> Like the the, fil- the films that are made to look like other films that are done super cheap. What's Swede? The vegetable. The don't you can't just say shit like that. Like we, like you, this I'm, is I'm classic Gavin. He's he's giving you a British slang for an American uh, for a vegetable <laughs> it's you will recognize. Slang. It's, just, it's, it's actually banana. Carrot. It's slang. It's a banana. What's a Swede? Okay, it's a vega. Rutabaga. Oh, okay. Rutabaga. Rutabaga. Yeah, sure. You, see, you know the word. You're just <laughs> he's an asshole. There's a collection. Yeah. <laughs> 
I, I miss that, this. I miss this. I mean, one of the first times I went to uh, Australia, I think it was in Adelaide. Um, there How was, do you like Adelaide? I like Adelaide. Never Sister been. city of Austin. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I went to a restaurant and they had like uh, salads on the menu. And one of them said it was a rocket salad. Mm. I was like, rocket? What the fuck is rocket? And mm-hmm. I asked the waiter like, rocket? What's that? What's rocket? And he became so flustered. He was like, <laughs> rocket, you know, it's... It's it's rocket. What do you call that? that arugula. Arugula. Yeah. Yeah. I know yeah, that I, now. I did not know that <laughs> when I was like twenty eight. Yeah, I'd never heard arugula till I came it's here. Like aubergine. What was that one? Isn't aubergine. That egg, isn't it eggplant? Yeah. Oh yeah, aubergine. Yeah. Courgette. Eggplant's okay. I'll no, eat it. I'll eat not, it. I'll eat it. But I'm I'm not. It's I, so I don't bland. Go out of my way for it. Not a great yeah. texture. To me, a long time. I used to have trouble with okra, but I've I've since. I like okra. Oh, you're from the w- south too. I know. That's part of why I. Reject most things from the South. Hmm. Uh, it's a self-hate thing, but uh, but I've 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 learned over time like to enjoy capsicum. okra. Capsicum. Uh, Laundrette has really good uh, grilled okra. I like okra. It can be a little slimy at times, but yeah, you got to get it. Get that grilled okra. Right? Yeah. Do you chug a pint of okra slime? No, I could not. Oh. I absolutely could not. Yeah, I would. Jack, a pint of okra slime. <laughs> yeah, maybe for some money, like not just for funsies. Oh, huh. for extra life. Uh, maybe. Yeah, we, that's coming up. I could, I could brace. I could give myself like training up until November for extra. <laughs> just to start with like a thimble of it, and then work my way to a shot, and then, you know, it's always almost extra life. It does feel like that. We're we're about the halfway point right now. RTX. Yeah, RTX. And what about RTX? It's coming. People up too. should go. Yeah, people should go to RTX. Keep, you're almost keep RTX. Keep, so RTX. People should go to RTX. Tickets this July year, 1st next year, third, fucking in 2025. Whatever. Jack will probably wear this shirt to RTX. I will. He's got a great shirt on. It's a great shirt. Thanks. I appreciate it. If you want to get a taste of what RTX is going to be like, come on down to Orlando, Florida, and watch Jack talk about roller coasters on stage (laughs) while he gives dudes hand jobs under the table. (laughs) It's hand jobs. You're changing it now. Yeah, it's changed. He gives hand jobs under the table. The dick sucks her out back. You can't do that on stage, dude. (laughs) Well, I thought that's why it was dark in there. Gus, right. Gus, are you gonna run a 5K with me no. before RTX? <laughs> no, absolutely not. We're still working on the details, but Thursday morning before RTX, we're gonna do a 5K, and uh, I'm gonna get Matt Bragg to do it. Oh, I think. <laughs> I, I've, well, that was part Did of. Did he thing. already commit to it? That was an extra life thing, and then I said like all of the Hunter do it, and like everyone's like, "Fuck that!" And so like no one's gonna do it. So it's gonna be me and Matt Bragg, and I think uh, uh, Josh is gonna do it. He's gonna come back in and do it too. So yeah, but uh, Josh yeah, Brolin. Be, yes, Josh Brolin. <laughs> Where just like downtown. Yeah, yeah. So we're probably just gonna meet at like Auditorium Shores and then oh. go from there. Run the run the loop. So it's nice. Josh Brolin's good in Outer Range. You guys watching that? Outer Range? What is that? That's that new Amazon show. Uh, it's like a. You watch a show that's not a reality. It's show? like a sci-fi cowboy kind. Of, it's kind of like Yellowstone if it had uh, time travel. Outer I don't like Yellowstone, but um, I do like this. I'm I'm shocked you're watching something that's not Survivor. Yeah, dude, or, I watch or, all kinds of stuff. Or a reality I just show watched them. I just watched Ozark last night. Oh, uh, did you, have you finished the new Saul. season? I haven't finished it. I just watched the first episode. I have two episodes. Epi- with Killer Mike in it. I have, okay, I have two episodes left of this final batch of Ozark. I'm probably going to watch it tonight. Man, you, how, how, how are you enjoying it so far? I don't want to answer that. I think you're like four episodes ahead. Uh, I think there's like seven yeah, final seven, seven episodes. Yeah, I'm on episode six. will be the next one I watch. I don't want to answer it because I don't want to I don't want to taint your Well, I will say that... <clears throat> a hell of a lot happened in the first episode back. They did not waste time. They did not waste any time. I did not also, expect us to go there. You said you're watching Better Call Saul. They're not wasting any time in, I have, yeah. in that show either. Yeah. Are you caught up on Better Call Saul? No, I'm just starting I'm just starting back in the final season. I made it to season three of that and then I somehow lost track of it. It's better I, I think it's I Is it a bingeable show? Like is it better I think than binge? it's better think, than Breaking Bad. It's better bingeable. I don't think it's better than Breaking Bad. Okay. I do. I like it better. I like the characters more. I think the the first season of Better Call Saul I was not a fan of. Uh, I mean, it was okay. Gus, you know what's yeah. better than Breaking Bad? The Pokemon show? <laughs> no, it is not. <laughs> um, According to the audience, that I, is. I, I know. Um, but uh, I, I think that it's, it's, it's really done well. I think the, the dynamic... It's, it, I'm, I'm, just, I'm shocked to hear that you stopped after season three. I think the dynamic between uh, Chuck and Jimmy was really strong. Yeah, that yeah. It's, it, that's it, this, I watched the first episode of season three where he can, I'll say Jimmy came clean about something. And uh, and yeah, and then I I don't, I don't know why I just kind of never got rehooked should, into it. You should get back into it. It's this very is the, this is the last season. Yeah, yeah so I, I mean, hear. if you're gonna watch, it, like I think it's a great show. Is it season five or six? Six, I think. And okay. it's also this season has Walton and uh, um, they haven't confirmed that, have they? Yes, I think they've they've, they've, yeah. written, they've been rumored to be in it. Didn't uh, he almost die making this? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he had a heart yeah, he had a heart attack. Then that was like on set. He just got yeah. he got his uh, his Walk of Fame star yesterday or this weekend. 
Yeah. It's, I think oh, now geez. now's the best time to watch it because you don't have to wait. That's been the killer thing for Better Call Saul for me. It's like, oh, and I have to wait a year. And okay. I have to wait two years, uh, you know, for a new season. By the time the new season starts, it's like, wait, what was happening? Yeah. Like, mm. I have to find a recap. And I think this is the best. This is the best way to yeah, do I'll it. Yeah, I watch it. Same thing with Ozark. Okay. Ozark's so good. Too. Ozark, Ozark. So fucking. Was also just... robbed in that. Is that Jason Bateman? Show we, uh, that yeah, but he's too did. stressful, though, Ozark. It is a stressful it's, thing. He's like but, but such the, a downer. By far the best part of Ozark is Ruth. No, right. no, no. Wendy. You think so? Wendy Bird. Wendy's great, Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Wendy's great, too. She's mm -hmm. the, the bird. You like that? I love the bird. Have you seen Resident Alien, the Alan Tudyk show? I watched the first season of Resident Alien. It, the, the first season was on the plane going to and from uh, <clears throat> London. And on the way back, I watched the first three episodes. I really enjoyed it. And I just mm -hmm. don't know how to find it now. I don't it's know where it is. It's on sci-fi. I think. Which service is that? There's so many of them the, now. The cable channel? Oh, <laughs> the yeah. cable channel sci-fi? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm so, an old man. I have cable still. <laughs> I enjoy that. <laughs> DVR, DVR stuff. <laughs> you have a TiVo? <laughs> I just, I just re-canceled cable like four months ago. Oh, really? I was still holding on to it, but then I was like, this is dumb. Because I pay for every fucking service. Yeah, me too. I even, I was even, I even last night I was like, I still pay for the Criterion channel. God damn it. <laughs> then I was going to cancel it and then I, I loaded it up and I went, oh, I can't get rid of this. What this is, is awesome shit Criterion? What is Criterion? Why, why is there, what does that mean? Like when it's like cl Criterion collection. They, they curate yeah. higher quality production stuff. And like usually it's movies and so they like do a Criterion version of like a Kurosawa film or something. But or is it different to a normal version? They usually will go through and they'll get like, it'll be the best quality print of it. So they'll do like a really good and they get and a capture have, of like, it. Like a lot of behind the scenes stuff. Version. Back in the DVD yeah. days, they would have tons <laughs> yeah. of extras and director's commentary and stuff. Now it's more like, a, it's just like, it's almost like IFC if it was more curated. Like they do, uh, like they have like a, I don't know, they'll, they'll pick some old director from the 40s, and they'll just have, like, a retrospective of their work for a month and celebrate it, and they'll have, like... Like, they're doing one about Richard Linklater this month. It actually looks pretty interesting. I'll probably watch some of that. Speaking of that, our, the Waking Life poster that was in the bathroom is gone. I don't know if you saw oh, that. Oh, yeah, it is gone. Yeah, it's it? sad. And the Sex, Lies, and Videotape poster that was in there, they're all gone now. Sex, Lies, and Videotape was not a great movie. No, no. We had to watch it for independent film class in college. Eh, I never right. saw it. It was okay. It's nothing. James Spader, right? It wasn't nearly as good as it was made out to be. Waking Life, that was the uh, with theatrical premiere of uh, Alex Jones, right? <laughs> he's in that. God. <laughs> now, look at look how far he's come. I'm, he went from, you know, uh, fire can't melt steel beams to talking to presidents. Good on you, Alex Jones, you piece uh, of shit. Austin success story. <laughs> God, I fucking hate that guy. And I hate, I hate that he represents Austin, too. Well, he's, he's from here, for sure. Yeah, he, he probably, is. to be fair, he probably hates that you do, too, though. Yeah, he probably doesn't, I don't know, whatever, fuck that guy. <laughs> His head's gonna explode someday, so it's all from just like the rage he has built inside of him. Isn't Amber Heard also from Austin? Is she? Is she? I don't know. Why? Why, why, why is it drop <laughs> shit like that? Why is just, that? Just cast the net out but, there and be like, "Fuck it, walk away." Why is all of that our business? By the way, like, why is the? I mean, for what it's worth, she could, is uh, Amber Heard from Austin, Texas. Wow. Uh, cool. uh, for what it's worth, it's, her birthday just passed. Did you wish her happy birthday? Why is it so public? I don't understand why this is happening to this couple. I, without Everyone's getting into it, it, as far as I know, basically they had an agreement and like Johnny Depp paid her a bunch of money and they're like, okay, it's over. That's it. And then she brought it all public and started s slandering or, or whatever, basically talking shit about him. And he's like, all right, fine. And so he sued her. For I just, defamation, I think, it's and now it's all. I, I don't know why it's televised. Not, yeah, why it's televised? I don't know. I don't know if that's a, like a judge makes that happen or what, but I don't I, know why. I, that I is. don't know. I feel like I feel like a lot of uh, that's that's cases what my like understanding. I could be totally wrong. Happened in, in the popular media. There's one in England right now going on between the two ladies. The one lady who uh, I think she she's a, a I don't know if it's a a, 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 a a wag. I don't know if that's a insult slander term or not. I don't like wives and girlfriends. Wives and girlfriends. Footballer. But like, yeah, she's like a. And like she had an Instagram account, and then sh people were leaking her information, and then so she set up a like a Finsta account and only gave one person access, and then it still got leaked. And then so she told the people that this woman leaked it, and then that lady is suing her now for defamation. It's a whole thing, and that's public too. Is, is it was all over. Public? It was all over the news when I was in England. Yeah, yeah. I just keep getting recommended all these clips from the trial. And it's like. I mean, I, I, I feel so icky clicking on I mean, that. Like, yeah. I don't, I, it's for not sure. for me. Like, could for you sure. just walk to don't a... Don't click it, by the way. Don't click it. I don't. I've not watched yeah. a second of it. Could you just walk to a courthouse right now? Like, if I went downtown right now, could I walk into a courthouse and just observe a trial? I think so. Yeah. I think yeah. that might be part of it. I think literally... Well, it is broadcast on, truth, on uh, like, court TV or something. Well, I, I think... I think it's just the high reason, interest, normal case. I think that's what it is. I think the idea is, like, 
if if you <clears throat> wanted to, you could go sit in on the Johnny Depp Amber Heard case in the courtroom. But to alleviate any sort of like massive push of people to get there, they're just broadcasting it. I think that that would be my logical yeah. interpretation of it. It's just so personal. It's just plus also people yeah. can make money off of it. Oh I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. Sa same thing. It's like I'm, I've, I've, I've not clicked on one of those links. But I, like it's just like I feel like it's everywhere. It's like bombarding me yeah, constantly. And they have millions of views. Like every tiny clip. It's mm -hmm. like well, people, wow. people, just people are obsessed with salacious. I see, someone wrote Shit, new right. West Memphis three trial up too. Are the West Memphis three back up on trial again? For what? I thought they got out, right? Like Damien Nichols and yeah, yeah. Like I that don't was know. a long time ago. Yeah, uh, fascinating documentaries. I think it's also like part of part of the public push in this one is that Johnny Depp views uh, his career as being destroyed in the public eye uh, for the allegations, and I think he he is wants a public platform to try to regain uh, his career. Yeah. Hmm. Isn't Kate Upton from Austin? Or Texas, at least. Can't remember. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Just keep asking us questions, chat. We'll, we'll look everyone up for you. <laughs> didn't and didn't you Michael know. Stipe go to school, go to high school in Waco? St. Yeah. Joseph, Mich Michigan. Not even, okay. okay, not even close. Okay, not even close. Terrible. Michael Anna Nicole Stipe. Smith was from Houston, though, right? She's from Texas. That was a thing, right? This is, this is where the portion of the podcast where Jack names people? Michael yeah. Stipe's from Georgia. Georgia. Doing great so far. But he Thanks. went to, I think he went I'm to good. high school in Temple. What was that, Mike? Kate Upton. It's true. Yeah. Justin Verlander pitches for the Astros. Pisses he pisses for the Astros. He probably yeah. also, I mean, when he's in the dugout, he probably uh -huh. pisses for the Astros too. Yeah, he but. pisses in the dugout for the yeah. Houston Astros. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in line behind Sandra Bullock once in Austin. Ooh. Nice. Name dropper. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Isn't, are we just talking about people from Austin? Did you have a nice that, long that, conversation? That was one of the the <laughs> greatest. Say what? That was one of the greatest, uh, uh, like the the misconnections on the back of a chronicle one time. It was uh, me running around town lake, kind of sweaty, having a rough day. You, Sandra Bullock, coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. st I stepped on what's her name once. Uh, <laughs> who was Spider Man's girlfriend in Kirsten Dunst? Uh, yeah, Kirsten Dunst. I stepped on Kirsten Dunst one time. What do you mean you well, stepped yeah, on her? Explain. So there's this uh, there's this art installation at UT like on the roof it's like this domed room that lets light in and as the light comes into this all white room the way it refracts uh, makes the room light up in different colors depending on the different time of the day so if you go there like at sunset you can watch it go from like blue to green to orange or whatever and it's like really vibrant and weird and it's just some sort of light bounce there's no there's nothing else causing it and uh, Emily and I went in there once and uh, people will just like you know hang out and read a book or fucking connect with their aura or whatever dumb shit they're doing in there. And uh, there was just some lady on the f in a fucking heap on the ground and I like tried to step around and I fucking stepped right on her and I'm like, oh, sorry, and kept going. And Emily was like, you just stepped on Kirsten Dunst. And I was like, oh yeah, I guess I did. What is she? Just fucking laying out in the bed like she owned the place. <laughs> I, I mean, was you. it was it packed or was it like There's you like just twelve people in there? It's not very big. <laughs> how, how did you how how do you step, step on, on one person it's on not, the ground? It's not much bigger than this. <laughs> it's like this. It's tiny. Gus, do you think you could step? You would. There's you like, would, if there were 12 like, people here, I would step on someone. Yeah, and you're just like trying to get through, and there's fucking What's people this place with their called? bags I'm gonna look and it up. shit. Is that Blanton, maybe? No, no, it's on, It's at UT. It's, uh, uh, I don't know what it's called. UT building. UT art, uh, art room. That's it. UT light, art room. Light room. Light room. Where did you lot. step on her? Like on her foot? Or <clears throat> like on her, like. I think it was like her. Sky space? Is sky that space. It? That might be it. Her, like her hair and her shoulder, kind of. Like bumped her. Was I with either of you when I went around a corner in New York straight into Cindy Lauper? <laughs> no. <laughs> Who was I with? Shit. Well, that happened. That How was, was that? That was really good. <laughs> <laughs> you the closest finding, I've come to it's stepping a, on someone. It's a small room, but I... I'm, I change. I change my mind. I don't know how you step on All someone. Right. It seems like you can avoid. It, have you ever Have you ever encountered a celebrity and had a but there, bad it wasn't, She wasn't the only person on the ground. I was like stepping over motherfuckers to get. See out now of the story's okay. changing. Yeah, there we go. I never said she was the only person on the ground. I just said she was on the ground. You, know, you could you even bring that up before. Is the excuse? The excuse was that it was a small space. Now the excuse is that there's too many people on the ground. You could have pre-capped it with right. That. That's fine. Whatever. <laughs> okay, I'm not arguing that. That's um, funny. have you ever had a, like an awkward interaction with a celebrity? Uh, I went to New York to see. Uh, red versus blue, and the guy in it said my fly was down. <laughs> that was me in front of everyone. I said celebrity. Oh. The night I met Gavin, was it down? <laughs> yeah, it, dude, it was. I, down. He was in the first fucking row. You were there. It was I, a, forgot. I don't remember. And that. I looked down, and there was Gavin. And I go, I was like, Hey, Gavin, your fucking your flies, your dicks out. And he's like, oh. Yeah, 
that was probably me at my shyest, and someone made me stand up in front of everyone, which I already, I was just like, Ooh. and then he was like, your flies are done. I was like, Ooh. <laughs> you see, you too can recover from embarrassing situations like that. No one will ever remember to talk about it on a podcast years later. That's true. You went on to be a slow mo guy. Congratulations. Thanks. Way to go, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should go check out that that room. Okay, it's pretty cool. I, I meant to look to see where it was. Yeah, uh, it's just do, on the roof of one of the buildings. Do, do one of your podcasts. There's a lot there. of buildings, though. Like, I don't, I don't, it's it's a at, uh, more specific. Location. William C. Powers Jr. Student Activity Center. Third floor, rooftop garden, 2201 Speedway. There you go. Okay. 20, Speedway at 22nd Street. There you go. All it's right. cool. Yeah. Neat. Good job. Awkward celebrity encounters. Yes. I told I, I, most of my encounters are awkward, whether they're celebrities or not. At, at South by one <laughs> What'd you year, do, dude, you say, right? Punch the the knob thing. Stop punching knobs. Uh, <laughs> at South by one year, uh, I, I was writing for a website, and I ended up going to a party for all of the people from uh, Forgetting Sarah Marshall, and it was right after Jason Siegel had been announced that he was doing the new Muppet movie, and I was way too drunk, and I sat down next to J- Jason Siegel. And I was like, hey, man. And it was like on a couch like this. I was like, hey, man. He's like, oh, cool, man. Hey, man. How you doing? I'm like, dude, don't fuck up the Muppets. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. And he went, all right, thanks, man. And then like just got up and walked away. And I was like, didn't even know, didn't even know what happened. I was, I, was too, I was too gone to realize that I had been a total ass. So. <laughs> but he didn't. He didn't fuck up the Muppets. So it's good. Maybe he listened to me. <laughs> you, you, that's all thanks to you. Yeah, probably. Project. Probably. I'm the reason why the first Muppet movie was good. Muppets Most Wanted, not so much. But. I love figuring it's because you Marshall. didn't tell him. I know. Good well, job. I don't think don't he was involved with that one. Oh, okay. That was the Tina Fey one with uh, Gervais. So, but the first one, good. Yeah, he he left the project after the first movie, which is weird because it took him like ten years to get it made, and then he was like, "I'm done. I don't want anything to do with no, it." He made, he made what he wanted. I guess so. You're done yeah. with it. In and out. Um, I I had a lot of. You know, I'm a super awkward person to begin with, <laughs> yeah, but I, I've are. had a lot of very <laughs> awkward encounters at Dice, which is like a a video game. Conference, but for like, uh, it's like professionals, in very the focused on developers and like very high level executives at game companies. And it was like any time I went to Dice when there was lunch, when lunch was served, it was for me it was like going to high school all over again. Because is that where they make us have to sit with the people and right. strike up conversations with strangers? Right. I fucking like hated that. You would get your lunch and then be like, "All right, I'm gonna go sit at a random table with people and try to talk to them." <laughs> and. It, <laughs> So I would go and I'd go and I'd sit down and I'd like without like I I, w- I would be so out of my element that I would just like randomly pick a table and be like all right that's where I'm gonna go sit now I wouldn't look at anybody be like I'm just gonna sit at that table I go sit down and look up and be like oh my god why did I pick this table <laughs> <laughs> so like uh, I had lunch at a table with John Romero once like that oh wow uh, and it was like oh oh my god it's John Romero sitting at the table I had uh, lunch at a table with Mike Morhane from uh, Blizzard years ago. And it's just like it, like it felt like every time I went and had lunch, it was like someone who was like, "Oh my God, why am I sitting at this table? Why did I pick this table out of any table here?" Uh, it was just, it was just all awful. You, not because of any of their fault. It was all me. Were you able to ever strike up a conversation with these people, or you just kind of shut up and eat your food? I mean, like, they would do a lot of talking okay. normally, and I'd, <laughs> I'd just laugh lifting. like, "Ha that's a great story. That's so funny." <laughs> <laughs> you made doom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I I have my terrible Charles Barkley story, which has been told too many times. But uh, I did meet Neil Gaiman once. Oh, yeah. I, I was pretty funny. I was there for that. So, uh, no, different time I met oh, Neil Gaiman. Oh, just I'm, kidding. Uh, before I knew you even, before Rooster Teeth, uh, I had a friend who owned a comic book shop over on over down by William Cannon. And uh, he uh, there was like a convention. I guess it was on the East, like, I don't know, Doubletree or something. There was like a comic book convention, and he asked me to help him set up. And then... Uh, like your alarm's going off, Time to feed the dog. And uh, I got to feed Henry. Uh, and, uh, so I went just to like help him set up and then he's like, Hey, I got to go, I don't know, take a piss or whatever. Can you just watch the place for me? And I'm like, yeah, man, no problem. And Neil Gaiman was the, uh, was like the featured guest. And this is right before Princess Mononoke came out. And it was a big deal because he had written the adaptation for it. Okay. And so it was like that level of Neil Gaiman fame. Like if in the comic book world, everybody knew who he was, Yeah. but he wasn't like, the Neil Gaiman that he is today. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't Stardust. And, or... But he still had his fucking leather jacket and walked around like a cool guy. And uh, so my friend uh, who had this comic book set up, he had built like a Neil, little Neil Gaiman shrine with all the different uh, like Vertigo graphic novels and stuff for Sandman and shit. And, uh, and I'm just standing there and Neil Gaiman walks up and it's like Texas and it's 
100 degrees outside and he's wearing a leather jacket which I thought was odd uh, and uh, he walks over and he like he like sees the setup and he's like oh, yeah. and he picks he kind of picks up one of his books and smirks and puts it down and he looks at me and he goes hey and I go hey how's it going and he picks up another one and he like he just starts thumbing through it and I go you interested in picking one of those up and he goes, <laughs> he goes uh, no I think I'm good and I go okay well it's not a library <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, uh, and he just walked away. <laughs> wow. And I probably laughed about that to myself for like two years. Wow. Yeah. So did you did you not know who he was? Well, I knew exactly who okay, he was. Okay. Yeah, it was hard to miss. So you're just being He was the ass. only guy in America with a British accent and wearing a leather jacket <laughs> and 110 degrees in Austin, Texas. He was, nice. he was hard not to know. <laughs> I just felt like fucking with him. I don't know. <laughs> that sounds so unlike Jeff. Yeah, <laughs> unlike weird. the Jeff of the late nineties. Mm. Yeah, uh, that's back when we, uh, we were much meaner. Much, much that's much the more kind asshole-y. of story we might hear on the Anima podcast. Maybe. Gus. Well, maybe not that one. In we episode together three, there. in episode three, we just met. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think as we, we got. Wow, there's so much background and so much like is it like old a prequel shit to talk through? Huh? It's like a prequel to how we know you. Yeah, yeah, I of. guess. One we, of the questions is: Do you have any like? <clears throat> What's like some of your favorite moments from community meetups? And that got us talking about Jeff quitting a job on the spot after he moved to Austin. <laughs> oh. <laughs> in like. I took everybody with me. <laughs> yeah. It was like, I don't know how we're going down these roads, but man, it's good. That's awesome. Oh, uh, it was fun. I'm excited to listen to it. I'll, Thanks, man. I'll add it to my other two podcasts I listen to. What do you podcasts do you listen to? I listen to Fuckface, uh-huh. obviously. I, I listen to, uh, there, there's a number of theme park podcasts I scan through, but there's one I listen to when it comes out. It's like monthly. It's uh, the theme park stop. And then, uh, yeah, and then Anba, you, I guess. Anma. <laughs> Anma. What Whatever. about you guys? Do you guys listen to a lot of podcasts? It's, it's now become my main form of entertainment, podcasting. I don't. Thing. I'll occasionally listen to episodes of things, like just like poking around listening to stuff, but nothing regular. Really? Yeah. How about you, Gav? No. Uh, I mean, I proof our one. And yeah. uh, yesterday I listened to every episode of 30 Morbid Minutes. Which yeah. is good, right? Yeah, it's very, it's very chill. and uh, It's really good. They're very funny. I think out of all the podcasts at RT, that one has the highest ceiling. The most chance for success. <clears throat> I heard it's <sighs> seasonal, though. Yeah, everybody says seasonal at first, but they'll fucking, I don't know. It, uh, I mean, that, even like Black Box Down, we're seasonal, but we do like 10 weeks on and then take like a break, but we still release supplemental episodes and then come back for another 10 weeks. Like just because it's seasonal doesn't mean you ever really take a break. It's still pretty much constantly coming Somehow out. Somehow every podcast I've ever been on has just gone indefinitely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I th- I don't, I, although I, we technically have four seasons of Bleep Face. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how. Like, <laughs> well, season three was only two. <laughs> <laughs> Fuckface started after Black Box Down, but has more episodes in it. <laughs> Early wow. week. We recorded 101 and 102 last week. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh, did you hear the conversation? So I was asking this about Eric. You proofed, did you proof this week's Fuckface yet? 101, yep. Done you, were you okay with all the first 14 minutes of me talking <laughs> about the baseballs? It's pretty long. It's pretty long. <laughs> uh, it's been cut down there. Yeah. Well, cut, I, mean, I don't know if you cut enough, though. You're a baseball <laughs> podcast, though, right? So. I think we went. Did we oh, go a little bit? You, you were I may podcast. have got. I may have got too inside baseball on how products are made. Wow! <laughs> like, just the behind the scenes. Oh, is this the whole thing? I heard something about this. That like, there's a problem with the way baseballs are made. No. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay. We did a thing I, I, where, like, independent of you and this. I saw like a news story oh. about how people are are blaming. Oh, just in general. Yeah, in general, are blaming the, like a low quality major league baseball with the fact that more people are getting hit this season because they're not. The balls aren't as consistent. I've actually this heard is, that too. Yeah. I will say this is the I think the lowest collective batting average in baseball in a very long time. Yeah, but it's weird because the uh, batting average leader is a San Diego Padre. So that's that is weird. That's that really is very strange. strange. That would never happen. Who's 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 the who is that? Tony Gwynn. Cosmer. You believe that? <laughs> huh. Anyway, we weren't talking about those. <laughs> the sixties. <laughs> we were just talking about how like we 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 released a bunch of baseballs for sale, but they. They launched 15 minutes early, and that was a very big deal. Ooh. People were very upset. Yeah, I was, I was there when, when that happened. I was with you and Emily <laughs> looking at your phone in England going, like, what the fuck is happening? And then having to, like, draft like, up oh, apologies. Oh, man. God damn it. Yeah. yeah. How many more baseballs are you going to hit? 
another 300. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I got to hit another 300. And I had it, I had it worked out where... Uh, oh, wait, you are going to do 300? Andrew more? and, well, Eric and you and Gavin were going to hit a bunch, but Andrew convinced us all that it needs to be me. Wow. <laughs> I, I, I told Jeff, so that was the idea. It was going to be a bunch of different people yeah. hitting them, and I was going to be included. And I said Gavin should hit one. Like just like dip a <laughs> dip a bat in gold and hit one and that's it and that's yeah and then we might do, yeah we might do that later okay there's a very specific reason why we what? shouldn't do it this time. is your arm recovered from that first yeah I'm fine now I'm fine it now. was like it had doubled in size and was glowing oh red. I had like a Popeye arm yeah, yeah it, it was gross good. yeah it was all like swollen here do you think it'll be easier this next time or do you think it'll be yeah harder? yeah I think so. Okay. Yeah. You got most of the swelling out of the way. Well, I've been, I've been, like, I, I've been, uh, I had been lifting, not lifting. I had been pretty sedentary because of my butt problems, and so I hadn't been like getting any exercise. But now I'm, I rode 28 miles this morning on my bike. I'm, okay. I'm doing some stretching. I'm back into it. I'm limbering up. I Riding a bike will help you hit baseballs. Yeah. That's what I hear. That's all well, the players do. Yeah. Build up my stamina. Mark McGuire rode a. He rode a lot <laughs> of bike. Giant arms. <laughs> yeah. uh, Eric, are you going back to the same field, or are you going to a different field this time? Uh, we will definitely be going to a different field. So okay. that way, we're like, I think we found them all in snake territory. I don't think there's any more. Um, we just have to go to a bigger field. Okay. So that's that's the plan. One without Because Kasha. Jeff hit them too far. Yeah. Look at you. Rocket arm. Well, what are you going to do? <laughs> hit, hit the ball you remember, hard. We have, maybe there's a story for Anima Podcast, but were you at the call center when we were in the softball league? Yeah. We should spider? talk about the softball league. Remember Spider? He'd come all the way from College Station just to play the games with us. I didn't know he came from College Station. Yeah, he, he, li- he was living. No, no, I'm sorry. Uh, not College Station. Uh, uh, Corpus Christi. He was living in Corpus Christi. Oh, he would right, drive yeah. up Jesus. to play the softball games. And we kept it going for a while for him because we, we liked him so much. We played in that league for two seasons and we never won one game. <laughs> I only played for one season. We came, one we season. came close to winning one game, but we blew it in the bottom of the last inning and lost it. <laughs> And Jack you, was the loser. <laughs> yeah, I was the loser. You remember because I got I got well. my shit stolen <laughs> <laughs> while you were living with your parents. <laughs> that was, I think that was true. Yeah, because I, I think I had just moved back. That's what it was. I had just I remember moved back. you were like I remember just laughing because you were like twenty eight and living with your parents and trying to date. <laughs> Mom, can you get out of here? I'm gonna bring a girl back. Hell yeah, get him. put a sock on the door. <laughs> Yeah, how difficult it is to move out these days. I don't know how people do it. It's even worse it's now. Like now, but like we're talking, now, this, is, but this is 20 years the, ago. The shitty no, thing I is, know. here's what happens. I, I owned a house. I moved <laughs> to California and rented my house out, and I was waiting for the woman's lease to expire so I could move back in. Yeah. So I, See, I was living with my parents for like two months. He's like, listen, I swear, I, I own a house. We can't go to it. Somebody <laughs> else is there, but I own a house. Anyway, uh, as soon as my parents leave, we can, get, we, can get, we, can come, we can go in. I miss this Jeff. I miss him so much. <laughs> it's been uh, a while. God damn. So what Jeff do you get? on annual pass podcast uh a, a very appreciative one because he doesn't have to do a lot of heavy, heavy lifting it was a lot of me doing mm. the work and just pitching it up to him that's so. a g-rated podcast so i'm very car talk in that one g yeah. for jeff i'm very click and clack and then in fuck face i'm i would just be me and then in the, in the one gus and i do it's just a, a it's just like old it, old dudes giving each other uh, emotional hand jobs under the table yeah. what is it with you today <laughs> <laughs> very sexual today i don't know what's going on uh, <laughs> Uh, Maybe I should jack off. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm backed up. Please, not, not on no, camera. No, I just, like, I spend, like, it's really is, it's, th- that whole other Anima podcast is just so I can talk to Gus. Animal podcast. Anima. I just miss talking Anima. to Gus. And I've had so much fun reliving old stories and shit that I had no memory of. Like, get, getting kicked out of that doctor's office. <laughs> I had no memory of that. Find out in episode three. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we'll do a good job of jogging each other's memory about Certain things and like the fucking <clears throat> all the games we used to play. No, 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 no. We let the all the games that we, that we invented about. that we talked about. We didn't actually yeah. play. That's fucking. That's also an episode three reference. Lame world. Uh, <laughs> what, can we just release episode three first? <laughs> well, no, we no. Someone's still talking about the pilot. It's, it's not even the first episode. Well, not out. Just it, swap we them just around. recorded that one on Friday, so it's like fresh in our mind. Fucking, I'd record two podcasts with each of you last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two with you, two with you, and two with you last week. Do you think that one will be more popular than this one? No, no. I don't think so. The the, the new I think it's a little too niche. It's very niche. Yeah, I think mm. people will enjoy it, and it'll be like very old Rouge Teeth vibes. Uh, but I th- I I don't I, th- I I can't think of a way to summarize it in a way that would give it any kind of mass appeal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like well, it's, it's, it's for a very specific. I group. think it might be better than what, face, what we do, <laughs> but I don't think it has the appeal. Yeah, if, you, if you like I'm it, sure. you like it, and chances are you won't. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, subscribe put, now. Put that on my shirt. <laughs> if you like it, you like it. Does that uh, shirt come in any of the colors? Yes. It okay. Also, it also what what are the in, other colors? It also comes in black. What the fuck is going on with my shirt? Because I, I got don't know. They're asking, so I'm asking now I've too. Re I've received texts from friends that are like, "That's a great shirt." Fucking Ben Davis in London texted me and said, "That's a great T-shirt." What the? Fuck? He's what is fucking, going on? Ben Davis is an awesome, supportive guy. Shout out to Ben Davis, by the way, and Rebecca. I know you're in the chat. We got to hang out with both of them. We were in London. Two of the coolest. My buddy Ryan. Two of the best Florida. ever. Do it. Said, That's a great shirt. It's a good shirt. <laughs> what do you mean? You ever seen somebody? This way, he's a fucking loser because he can't take a compliment. No, because I don't trust you assholes. Jack, I, uh, sorry. His name Gus, is Gus. I like your shirt too. <laughs> or Gustavo. Thank you. Also yeah. available at storedatreceipt.com. So that one's in the store and that one's in the store? Yes. Yeah. What about yours? I don't think I don't that's know if in we the sell store anymore. Mm. Uh, I don't know. That's this a, this one, a Jeff this shirt. One, I don't think we sell This one anymore. just came out like two weeks ago. Go buy it now, please. I do or like Black that Box one. Down. We don't have a lot of merch, so please buy it. 1901? Yeah. It's like a VOR radial information box that you would see on a sectional chart, but it's all Rooster Teeth references. I was going to say that. Like this would be the frequency, the NDB channel, and the Morse code. MBD. NDB. On Drexel Beacon. Enba. <laughs> um, man, I did, I did uh, this past Friday after we recorded episode three of Anma, I, I did one of my last milestones in pilot training before <gasps> I, like, schedule my test. Barrel so I, roll? I, I, I'm barrel working roll? On, huh? Barrel roll? Barrel roll. I did a barrel <laughs> roll. What, were you, what would you, what'd you do? Uh, you have to do a long cross-country trip, and that, so to, to meet the requirements, you have, to, you have to do a trip, you have to leave from one airport, Stop at two other airports. Come back to your the one you started from. Your trip has to be a minimum of 150 miles, and the at least one leg has to be 50 miles long. So you have to go. You have to leave your airport, go at least 50 miles, stop at another airport, leave, go to another, another airport, airport, and then come back. And then come back, one. and that whole thing has to be at least 150 miles. Yes. Uh, so I flew from Austin to Brenham to Eagle Lake, which is out by Columbus. Then from Eagle Lake back up to Austin. Now, is that a route that, miles. that they already have planned out for you to I take? It. No, it's like you get to pick whatever you want. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Really? Do you have to pay to land at an airport? No. You don't? In Europe, you do. Okay. Uh, but in the United States, no. How long did that take? It took, a, all told, about like time to like pre flight the plane and taxi, take off, land, and everything. A little over two hours, two hours, 15 minutes or so. Okay. Did you have any oopsies? Uh, no, but. The 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 wind wasn't idea. It was a windy day, I don't know if you remember, uh, uh. on Friday, <laughs> and it was like, it was just annoying. <laughs> so after we hung out and, and got coffee and had our conversation, you got on a plane and flew. Oh, well, I went eight, and then I went. You down. went to four air, well, three, three airports, but yeah. one twice. So that's fucking cool. So if you could, can you go to any airport? Like, could you fly into DFW right now, or is it as a student pilot? So we're gonna do, we're about to do an episode on Black Box Down about this, but uh, as a student pilot, you cannot fly into what are called Bravo class airports, which are the busiest ones without special permission. So DFW is a Bravo. I could not fly into there until I get my license. Then I can fly in there, no problem. Wow. Okay. So I was thinking about you last night. I watched uh, uh, one of the episodes of that HBO documentary, The Way Down. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. About the religious people that the cult uh, and the, the plane crash, like the weight loss cult, yeah. and they crash. And I was thinking, I hope you're a better pilot than that. <laughs> I hope so too. <laughs> It's a uh, yeah. It's a uh, th but that that's the 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 weird thing is that you don't have to pay to land. Like uh, I went to Kerrville a couple weeks ago. It's like I was like, oh, I want to get down. So I, I I landed. I parked the plane. Got down. Like you don't have to pay anyone. You don't have to talk to anyone. What did you do? Did you like go get lunch in Kerrville or anything? I just peed. <laughs> like I went <laughs> I went into the building. It's like oh, that's what this place looks like. I'm so gonna take a piss. What's Kerrville like? I just saw the airport. <laughs> uh, so, like, I always wonder. Like, there's, a, there's a there's a plane manufacturing factory there. Well, there's the oh, big wow. Cur the Kerrville Folk Festival that everybody talks mm. about. Like it's a big deal, but I've I've ne I've no Kerrville knowledge. So if you wanted to like fly to Vegas, like could you be like you know assuming you have your license and you you have access to a plane, could you be like I'm just gonna fly to Vegas and yeah. then just land and then do they have like is you, it like a parking lot where you can just go park a yeah, plane? They and call then, it like an FBO, uh, and you just like land and then you radio them. You're like, hey, I just landed. Can I get gas and can I park my plane? And they're like, yeah, and they'll tell you, like, typically it's like, if you need to park, it's 50 bucks or whatever. But if you buy gas, then there's no fee to park. Oh, wow. Okay. And you just, like, park your plane. And that's the crazy thing. Like, you don't have to tell anyone you're going. You can just, like, yeah. show up and be like, hey, I'm here. I want to land. And they're like, okay, cool. Come on in. So if you get, like, within a certain radius of the airport, you just, like, radio into the tower and say, like, put me in line. And Do a British mm -hmm. accent. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Like, like, put your monocle in Austin, for example, you cannot get within 10 miles of the airport until you talk to them. Okay. So it's like, you have to establish radio communication and be like, I want to come in. I want to land. And they're like, sure, come on in. Fly this heading. Do you think wow. you'll ever be a schmuck who lands on an active taxiway? <laughs> I hope not. No, I'm not going to Harrison Ford it. <laughs> I know we've talked about it uh, in a previous podcast because I'm very interested in this. But why, 
why is this so expensive? Because it sounds, once again, it sounds like... What do you mean? Like you, we, we talked about how, like, ultimately, it's a, flying is a, a fairly uh, financially prohibitive. Yeah. But, like, I'm doing the math again in my head. How much is the gas? Um, depends on where you go. Here in Austin... Like, let's say we're in Vegas. We're just Austin to Vegas. I, I can look up the price, but here, I, I can use Austin, because I know Austin off the top of my head. You, you'll pay, like, for 100 LL, which is, like, what a propeller plane will use. It's, like, 67 bucks a gallon. Okay. Uh, six to six, six, seven? seven, somewhere okay, in that six range. Six to seven. Uh, but you burn 10 gallons an hour while you're flying. Okay. okay. So you're looking at 20... 60 to 70 bucks an hour? 25 gallons to get to Vegas, maybe? Oh, no, it's way more than that. Is it? <laughs> yeah. I guess you fly slower. Uh, yeah, if you fly in a little plane like that, it's way slow. Like, how, how, what's your airspeed? You'll, you're, I mean, grounds, let's say 100 knots. Let's say you... Like when I did that flight the other day, I was probably average ground speed around 90 to 100 miles an hour. Oh, so it's like a th- like thirty three percent slower than a like a commercial airline. Oh yeah, a third of the speed. Yeah, it's way yeah. way slower. The but you make up the advantage is you can go straight. You don't that have to worry about like traffic. Flies. You don't have to worry like go around a mountain or you gotta go over it. <laughs> <Just> go <laughs> right through it. <laughs> so uh, like a Southwest flight Austin to or I guess American has one now too. Uh, a direct flight American to Vegas is like two hours and twenty. Oh, minutes, it would take maybe. God, flying take in a like little five. single engine plane like that. No, it would take way longer. Really? It would take like so that's the well, that's why it's prohibitive. <laughs> But like, like, say, like, okay, so what is the like? When would it be cheaper for us to go to you and be like, Never. Gus, we want to go to Never. Dallas. <laughs> like, 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 we want to go to Dallas, and there's like, you know, how many people would you have to take to make it it's, break even? That wouldn't would, would cost as much as like a. It wouldn't like a little plane like that. You can fit four people in. Okay. What if you tow a basket of people? <laughs> <in? laughs> like, it's never cheaper to fly a private plane. It okay. is always cheaper to fly commercial. There's a, there is no like unless you like weigh in like your time savings right like you don't have to go through security you can be like oh we just want to go right now we I mean, need you to go, right go through now. some kind of security right like there's no scanners well, or anything or like no bag checks I mean, I've had like, to get my back I've already had like a background check okay and everything so like they they know me and then anyone I bring like I vouch for so oh. it's like I would just walk through and, and you're be like bringing Chris <laughs> I just be like Dude. I could just be like hey going out to the plane like all right yeah go through you should uh, you should do drug running. Mm. <laughs> That's how you can make like, a lot. It's expensive, of, you right? You can make a lot of fucking money. I you saw a Tom be... Cruise movie who, when he did that, and he made a lot oh, of yeah, money. What was that? You could move so many crates of Bovril around the U.S. <laughs> yeah. illegally imported. Um, Just Bovril yeah, and it, salad cream <laughs> over. <laughs> it's interesting. After I get my license, uh, you should come by. We'll, we'll go on, we'll on a little flight around. I would love to. All of you, you're all you're all welcome. Why does everyone wish. want to fly with Gus? Well, I like him he a lot. He seems trustworthy. I can do it. I'll take you too. Not all at once. <laughs> Why don't you want to fly with Gus? I just don't want to go. Why not? He doesn't want to drive. I don't blame him. <laughs> He's v- Gavin is very risk averse. He showed up 15 minutes late. What if... Uh... It's okay in this case. Well, wait. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're not going to miss your flight. Yeah. What if you've... St- I don't know. What if you had a stroke? Man, then you kick me out. Like you said last <laughs> week, you kick me out and you take it over. <laughs> Figure it out. I asked Gus if it was all right to throw a dead body out of a plane. <laughs> If you want to get in the driver's seat. Yeah, international waters, right? <laughs> international yeah. air. International air waters. <laughs> He's got to go six miles up. <laughs> you're safe. So you're saying we can go six miles up and play poker legally. Like, <laughs> the house can take a rake when you're up six miles. Everyone hold on to your chips. There's turbulence. <laughs> oh, Gav, that reminds me. I did something for you yesterday. Uh-oh. Oh, God. Yeah, good luck. You're welcome. Oh, shit. I rode my bike by your house yesterday, and I didn't fuck with you at all. And uh-huh. I had, I realized I was on your street. I wasn't intending to, and I had a bunch of ideas <laughs> on things that I could do. And then I just didn't. I really, it, you come a long way. You're getting very yeah. mature. Yeah. yeah. I didn't do, I, I, there, some of them were funny. Mm. But I didn't want to get shot and I don't want to upset you. <laughs> Not all of them were funny, <laughs> just some of them. <laughs> I didn't do any of it. I didn't even make any videos for you on your, cam- on your security cam. Oh. Maybe next time. I woke up I this morning. I do like those. I woke up this morning and, uh, and my bathroom window, uh, I looked out and there was just an owl sitting there. <clears throat> I don't know what the hell's going on lately. In After the, the, day? S- the storms the other day, remember I was like, yeah. I walked out and there was an owl. Yeah, like a this, tootsie roll pop this or something? He was like, or? this big, just sitting there. This is he, like season one of Twin Peaks? He like turned and looked at me, and then like turned away, like he didn't give a fuck. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, that owl doesn't care that I'm here. You've probably got a black lodge growing in your backyard. How long mm. does it take for a nest of birds to be empty? Like how, like, like there's birds nesting right now in Texas. I know because they're in my vents in it's my like house. <laughs> six, like, in your six, vent? to, six to eight weeks or so. Okay, so like sometime in like July. Okay, because it, literally on either side of my house, I've got those vents that have like a little cover, but yeah. then you turn the you know the the you know the dryer on, and they kind of blow up and they blow the, the whatever out. 
there's birds inside of those, and I know because I can hear them, and I can also see their nests spilling yeah. out of them. You can flush that out with bleach to get rid of them. <laughs> I don't want to kill the birds. I want to get like they can they can you know have their nest. I'm fine with that. They're adorable. Bunch of jet white birds trying to fly <laughs> away. From... Don't do that. I was kidding. I like birds. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you, yeah, I, you got to put like a mesh or something. Yeah, on the no, that's that's, that's the plan. But I like I like it, this literally has happened to me multiple times over multiple years, and I just keep forgetting. And then they go away, and I'm like, oh whatever. And then they come back. It's like, oh shit, that's right. I was supposed to do that but yeah i'm just trying to figure out the best like i'm trying to figure out when they'll go so i can then clear it all out and put a mesh up yeah put a cat on a pole yeah. and uh, hold it up there my fucking dog my, my fucking dog she, she ran into the backyard and found a possum like a little baby possum and uh i like i knew something's up because i let her out and usually she just kind of runs out and like we'll take a pee but she bolted and I was like uh oh and so I went out after and I found this little possum it was playing dead and it had like a little puncture hole in its side oh, it was it was okay damn. and I'm like screaming at my dog I had to call Katie to come out to get the dogs and then uh we we took this possum put it in a little cat carrier and because we're like we'll take it in an animal rescue because it seemed it was breathing it wasn't like yeah. bleeding out and then we went there's an Austin wildlife rescue place here that's awesome yeah I've it's just there. it's a cool cool place and we had this little baby possum the cutest little thing and we took it in you know we had been handling it with gloves being very careful about it and the woman just opened it and just grabbed it with her bare hand <laughs> <laughs> she's like yep yeah, looks yeah he's got a little little hole there but that's okay we all, we all, we'll clean him up and i was like do they have rabies amazing. often no uh, possums do not carry rabies yeah they don't carry rabies their their temperature is too low i think where they can't catch rabies i also so. have a family of possums living in my backyard yeah. and rabbits and we it's like a <clears throat> Disney movie in my backyard. Yeah. These days. Should, I've, got, I've, got, I've got a shed in my backyard, and we have a camera under it because I had a spare camera, and I get possum footage all the time. I, I think the possum it. lives under our back porch. Let me see I, I'm, I'm all about it. I'll find a good possum. Yeah, I accidentally show. left out some uh, some crisps on my in my backyard, and on the camera I saw a possum come up and just get did, in the bag and just start eating them. Did it use then, its hands? Yeah, it was like eating them, like chomping away, and then it's me, my cat walks up to it, and like they go like this, they, he like sniffs its face. And then it just goes back to eating the things, and we just watched it for like forty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're pretty cute, aren't they? Little possum. They're yeah. adorable, man. Yeah, they're adorable. The possums are like the cutest things oh, ever. It's pretty cute. There was one I was sitting on my front door one time, like sitting on my my porch. We walked up, and it was like, and it stood there, and it was like, what can move? And it wouldn't move. It just kept his mouth open, and we had to kind of because it was away. dead. No, no, that That's one why was, was frozen. Fine. That one was pissed off. <laughs> Isn't it bad if you see them in the day? Like there's something wrong with it. Uh, I don't know. I think so. Not with a possum necessarily. They're not a coyote, so I think mm. you're you're gonna be okay. But okay. animals are awesome. Wild animals are just great. I love animals. Yeah. <laughs> come come by back, my backyard sometime. It's a fucking <laughs> <laughs> fucking zoo back there. <laughs> what do you got? Everything. I've got foxes, possums, raccoons, owls. Yeah, shitload owls. Yeah. Um, owls are fucking loud, have? man. Cats. You name it. If, if it's an animal in Austin, it's in my fucking backyard. <laughs> yeah, Shitting owl. and eating whatever. We have an owl, like a, I think a barn owl in our neighborhood, and it sounds like it's just outside of our door, like at night when it starts making noise. And you open it and you realize it's like, oh, it's three blocks away. Those things are so fucking loud. Yeah. They're awesome. Yeah. Remember all those owl pellets we found on that haunt? Oh, God. Yeah. And you like step on it and just dust would come up. <laughs> Where was that? I don't know. It was that, like... was, that was Kennedy Mines. That was the last shoot. That was the last yeah, Hunter that, shoot. That place I was definitely on. took at least three years off the life of my lungs. Oh, my God. Well, that was when we buried you. Yeah, we buried you. I had a rough day. <laughs> <laughs> we buried you alive and then we climbed up and like, that was by far the sketchiest. <laughs> Thing we ever did. It was in rickety. There that was there was, was no rail. There was nothing safe about God that. Y'all was making fun of me for being terrified, justifiably. <laughs> that was one of the. I, you know, what I remember about that night more than anything is how fucking cold it, it was. It was very cold. So cold. Yeah, that was fun. I wish ghosts were real. <laughs> <laughs> Would have made that show a lot better. We they may have actually had a they third were real. season. You just didn't try hard enough. Oh uh, no, we tried pretty hard, I man. Tried. We we, tried, we almost killed Gavin. And I wish ghost, ghost hunting didn't cost a million dollars for eight episodes. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good. You probably eight, do it cheaper. Eight good episodes. I'll get you, Ghost. Five hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> it's yeah. just so much footage like with nail edit. polish. So much footage. <laughs> um, all right, well, let's go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, don't forget uh, annual past live show May nineteenth in Orlando. For fuck's sake, please go. Please go. We're, we're gonna, gonna sacrifice Jack alive on they, stage. They keep saying please go, but they're not telling you how to go. 
Go to rtxevent.com to buy a ticket. Or bit.ly slash TIX dash Orlando. That'll take links you there, in, too. Links it, in the description. Links in the description. Uh, Store.roosterteeth.com for, for this Yeah, Jack's going to be wearing that shirt I'll be live. Wearing, apparently, I'll be wearing this shirt live. We'll have, in uh, Florida, you can see it in person. Uh, uh, Dave Cobb's going to be there. Dave Cobb's awesome. He made the Men in Black ride. He's awesome. Super, super nice guy. Excited to hang out with him, too. Subscribe to Anma. Buy a Black Box Down shirt. And yeah, if, if you ever wanted back. to hear two old dudes talk about their past, boy, yeah. do we have a podcast for you. <laughs> and come back next week. There might be beans. I don't know. Beans. I'm going to come eat some beans. Episode and then 700. Enjoy 700, Gus. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh. All right. What? Have a good time. Bye. Bye. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to put a fuck face, but...